Hey guys, you're listening to the Soccer Podcast. My name is Ruja, but you can call me Rose. I'm a football staff and former referee. But don't worry, I'm not here to show you any red or yellow card. Just get ready to kick off the undiscovered journey in women's football. Well, I'm thrilled that we are opening the soccer podcast session with Nevena Damjanovic, captain of Sporting Lisboa. Did I say right? Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> well, oh, oh. So, please, tell the audience, how is possible that girl coming for or from small country like Serbia is captain of this amazing club with such a football history worldwide known? Yeah. Please explain <laughs> us that. Explain yeah. us your journey from from small city in Serbia where you come from to being a captain of, of Lisbon Club. Yeah, first, uh, thank you for inviting me for this podcast. And uh, of course, I need to apologize if my English is not so well. Uh, yes, uh, my journey was like crazy, if I can say like that. Uh, now I'm in this moment in Portugal, really enjoying uh, to represent the club like sporting. And I'm really, really happy because I am captain. So I start like in uh, Serbia, uh, like uh, first I play in Spartak. Like when I talk about my professional career, I start in Spartak. Uh, I play there five years. So I can say that uh, football wise, I have amazing experience there. I won five times title, a title there. Uh, I have four cups. I represent uh, Spartak in Champions League. So after that, I was like ready for a new challenge in my career. So I went in Denmark. I play for Fortuna Joring. That is only women's, uh, women's club. So uh, maybe the name of the, that club, it's not so famous, but it's really nice just to be part of the women's team and all like uh, all city is about girls football. So I represent that club three years. We won two times uh, state championship and we won cup. I represent and that club in Champions League. Uh, we were like in one season, the best eight teams in Europe. So after that, I decide to take another challenge in my career. So I signed with Sporting. Uh, now I am in Sporting. This is my third year. Uh, in this moment, uh, we we didn't uh, win a championship because like last year, they stopped a league because of Corona. Unfortunately, we share in that moment first place with Benfica. But because of this uh, pandemic, uh, unfortunately, we stopped our season. This year, we are like first for now. We have like one point uh, above the Benfica, so we have six games more. I hope so that we will continue to win every uh, every game until the end of season and to be champion. That is our main goal, of course. And uh, tell me, uh, Portugal is a specific football nation. How they accepted the fact that the Serbian girl is a captain of one of their favorite teams? Uh, yeah, I need to say Portugal is really like uh, specific about uh, football. Like uh, when I signed with Sporting, um, first uh, when I saw that uh, on their games it's around 10,000 people when they play against some team, I was like, whoa, 10,000 people come to watch some soccer game like where girls playing. That's amazing. So that was like, uh, I hear all the best about this team. So it's like a lot of people are coming, supporting women's team. And I was like, yes, I want to be part of this team and sporting. Like it's a huge club here with a long tradition. So yes, I was uh, amazed to sign with uh, this team. Uh, after one year, uh, I become captain. And uh, I think that uh, everyone receive uh, really well because um, and the style how I play and I play like with all my heart. I always give the 100% in every game. So I think they like it for now. What I, I will know. add 1000. I will <laughs> add 1000%. <laughs> yeah, I say like when I sign for them, I say that only one thing I can um, say and that's every game I will step on the pitch and give 100% of my possibilities. So I think they recognize that uh, and yes. That's the way. I think that they're happy about it. 
Well, speaking of recognition, uh, when we spoke a couple of days ago in, uh, in, in Serbia, when you were with Serbia national team, you said that is, it is an amazing feeling when you go out in Lisbon and then you can see that people are recognizing. I'm afraid that in Serbia maybe that wasn't uh, a situation that you go out and people recognize you as a female football player. Tell me, how do you feel when you go out in Lisbon and then people know who you are and, and they like want a piece of you like yeah. in, in, in men's, men's game? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I say that um, I need to be honest, that's a new experience for me because uh, I didn't uh, was recognized in any team. Uh, like, of course, when I play in Subot, it's a small town and people know that you play football, but uh, going out in Lisbon and some people recognize me, I was like uh, really amazed because uh, that means uh, you do your work really good and uh, that is something what motivates you to be better. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of situations and, you know, like Lisbon is a big uh, city and I was really, if I can say, proud because uh, I know that I am doing uh, like a good thing. So, yeah, it's really, really Can you nice. give me the example? Can you give, explain us more about like, give us some uh, situation where you were like recognized as a, as a sporting yeah. Uh, captain? <laughs> yeah, I was like uh, walking with my friend because like um, we have free day and of course we want to enjoy Lisbon because Lisbon is one of the beautiful city, I think, in the world. So yeah, we played that Sunday against Benfica and I scored from penalty. So a couple of guys come and just hug me and say like, oh, you're like, that goal was amazing. That's really important for us. And I was like, yeah, of course. And I was like shocked in that moment. And yes, in restaurants and uh, everywhere, like a lot of times I get recognized. So it's really nice. It's uh, really cool, I think. <laughs> So I hope that next time like, you will get a free taxi ride because yeah. of uh, scoring for sporting or something like that. Yeah, I have some free drinks in our bar here where I live, so it's, like, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> That's really cool. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, where do you play uh, in terms of where do you have trainings? Are you part of the sporting academy? Do you have your own pitch? Uh, Tell us more about the entire organization of sporting. Yeah. Like, are you divided or you're incorpor incorporated in, in, in the system? No, we are, uh, no, we are incorporated like in the system because like uh, we train in academy where all our teams, men's teams are training. Of course, first team, uh, men's first team, they have separate like pitch where they are only trained, but uh, we are like sharing all academy together. So yeah, it's like academy is like from my apartment 20 minutes so every day like we are going there like uh, I don't know one hour 30 minutes earlier to prepare uh, yourself for training and yes we have all like things what men's team have there so yeah and what about the support in terms of marketing do you have like separate people dedicated to marketing of women's team or you have the same uh, as the men's team like I think that uh, I am I, not 100% uh, percent sure but uh, yeah we are like separate we are like we have marketing support from under 23 men's what is like really big thing here and they are like our N women's but of course every our game is like on sporting TV like uh, we are in Portugal like always on TV ch channel 11 what is like really famous here so yes, so we are really like about marketing. I cannot say like uh, uh, that we are on the side. Of course, we are always, uh, uh, we are really important part of the sporting family. So like we have a lot of media uh, like lights on us. That's, that, that's really nice. Yeah. Well, the progress and everything that we can see, the recognition of you and your uh, teammates uh, in Lisbon, uh, all happened because actually entire women football in uh, Portugal progressed a lot in uh, recent years. Even you told me that, for example, this season you're playing the toughest games in, in your career, like almost every every weekend. Uh, can you tell me more about the progress of women's football in Portugal? What happened in, in, in last couple of years? So what is the major change that you can, you can feel? Uh, yeah, it's like when I come here three years ago, like uh, Sporting was the best team uh, like in Portugal. Uh, then you have one more team, Braga. Uh, it's a really, really like good team. 
But then next year, Benfica organized, uh, they start to have like women's teams. So that was like, whoa, you know, like it's like that's really good for Portugal because Benfica is sporting their like biggest rivals. So this year uh, we have one more team, uh, Family Cow, who is like really, really good. So this year competition is really tough, I can say. We have so much good games. What is good? Because people are more interesting to watch more good games in women's football where you don't have like big results like 8-0, 6-0. You know, every game is 1-0, 2-1, 1-1. Like in this March, I have like really difficult schedule about uh, the games because we play uh, Braga, Braga, Benfica, Benfica, Familical. So we win games in last minutes. Uh, we won game of two minutes, uh, like 88 minutes, you know, it's really, really interesting. And that is really good because more and more people are interested to watch women's uh, uh, like football because games are good, like we have quality and you never know what can happen. So that is really good. Uh, in Portugal, generally, they uh, they put women's football like in media a lot. Like when I'm talking about national team uh, and about like our league, so that is like the biggest, uh, if I can say, game changer because the more and more people like know about us. And this year was like really amazing because every game is like on TV. You, like your Sunday home, what? Oh, I can watch Sporting Befica. Of course, I will watch that. That is a big game. It's not important if it's like men's or women. So, yeah, that's that's really really nice what they are doing now. They are doing amazing job. That's like really great to hear. Like mm. I'm I'm like like really thrilled about it. So I can compare compare you with the one uh, football legend worldwide now. Yeah. It's Cristiano Ronaldo, of <laughs> course, because. <laughs> He was captain of sporting yeah. and you are now captain of sporting. So yeah. we can say that actually, can you say that you're on the same level? Like, yeah. <laughs> nah. like uh, you know, I am giving my best. Like I can say that I am best version of myself. So it's like I never compare myself with, you know, other uh, athletes or uh, people because everyone have different story, you know, so I, I'm trying just to be best version of myself every day when I woke up. So that's the, my main goal. But yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo is a legend, uh, not in sporting in all Portugal, you know. So uh, it's really nice when you go in academy and you have all picture of the one of the best player in football, in history of football. So it's motivate you more because uh, when you know that he started here and now you're part of this team, it's not only for us girls, it's for all young boys who are coming in academy, who are sharing like locker room and you see the picture of the best player in the world so it's really really nice and motivates you to be better but in women's football in portugal who would be the player that you can like uh, say that he's a biggest star in in portuguese women's football for example i know for carla Couto who played the most uh, games for the national team but like from your perspective who is the star the biggest star of women's football in in portugal uh, uh, to be honest, like uh, I play, I have opportunity to, to play with a lot of uh, national team players. Like from Sporting is like around eleven players in first national team of Portugal. So um, I like I respect every my player and of course all players who are playing for Portuguese national team. I think now the biggest star probably is uh, Jessica Silva. She is like uh, playing in Lyon. So. Like, I know that a lot of young girls are, uh, of course, uh, when they see that she's playing for the biggest women's team in uh, Europe, they want to be like her. Then we have a lot of like older girls like Anna Borges or Carolina Mendes. Uh, they're like, uh, really like, they're playing in Portuguese national team long time. So, of course, a lot of uh, young girls have a lot of good uh, players and good girls to get like, uh, if I can say, to be their idols. So, yes, if I can say, probably Jessica Silva is the most popular now because, of course, uh, she's playing really well and uh, she's in Lyon, what is like, I think, probably dream of all girls to be there. Well, but when you think about her being uh, the star, the idol and everything, do you feel that hype in the nation around her? Is, can be compared with some of the players in, in men's football. Of course, I'm not thinking about Cristiano. Let's, yeah. let's say some 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 other guy from, from men's team and then you have Jessica on the other side. Do you feel that hype around her is, is the same? 
But what I can see and what I know, uh, yes, because uh, like um, Cristiano Ronaldo and her, they did some marketing thing together. So when Cristiano posts on his Instagram profile, who is like, I don't know how many uh, millions following, you know, everyone will see her and they will be like, oh, she's like from Portugal, Portuguese national team player. She's amazing. She's playing amazing. And of course, it can like be like, Uh, in that level. Uh, it's really nice because um, Cristiano Ronaldo is like supporting women's football and like a couple of times he sent some, I, I think, football shoes to younger, like uh, under 17, 19, like girls, like teams. So that's really nice because he is investing. That is really big thing for uh, like women's team. So I think it can, like, of course, it's a really big difference between men's and women's, but Like with these small steps, like I told you, like just po Cristiano when post with her that pictures, immediately she can have a lot of attention of her. And of course she deserves, like she's a good player. Uh, and comparing with Serbia, do you think that if like, for example, Dusan Tadic is captain of Ajax or Nemanja Matic, Manchester United uh, star, do you think if they were, uh, if they will If they would post something on their social media, like, for example, Cristiano did in Portugal, do you think that that would uh, raise an awareness in, in Serbia or that people will be more interested in to see, for example, what's Nevena doing or something like that? Yeah, but, like, I think, uh, like, I think yes, because um, uh, now media, like, we are living, like, some, how I can say, like, media time, you know, so if you post something with, uh, like, woman's player of course a lot of people will be interested in, oh who is she like what she's doing so it can i think only positive things can come from that um, i think that like all around now uh, europe it's like uh, is going uh, they want to be like that more uh, women's to be invest with a men's football so that we can have more lights on ourselves uh, and i think that is a good to think why not uh, we are like football players like them so it's like Why not? And we deserve to have that attention like them. And speaking of social media importance and, and uh, also sticking to Ronaldo, because as as we said, you are in Portugal, you are in his club, you're captain as mm -hmm. him. So it's, it's, it's natural to speak about him and what he can contribute with his example to, to women's football, what we can learn. Uh, from his example in women's football, uh, Juventus brought him because of his uh, marketing potential and everything that he he does and what he created around his, his brand CR7. Yes. Uh, when it comes to women's football, are they are there uh, stars that clubs are bringing to actually raise the awareness? For example, do you think that uh, Sporting could uh, bring, for example, some? international star from women's football to, to Portugal and then even put everything on a higher level, no matter the progress that that is already made there. Uh, yeah, it's like, of course, uh, but in men's football, it's much dif different, you know, like when you bring Ronaldo, oh my God, your percentage and everything is like going so crazy up, like about marketing, I don't want to say that because he's like star. Uh, in women's football, but probably we can have like, yeah, we will be more recognized if we bring some like good, good player. But I don't think so. That is like so big, big difference like men's players do. Because of course, like um, men's football is uh, now really crazy. Like everyone knows a lot of players. They have all med media attention on them. So it can, but really, I don't know if it, it will be like how it's in men's football. But let's let's uh, hypothetically yeah. speaking, if if you if like Sporting brings Alex Morgan yeah. to, yeah. for example, for, let's let's speak about like the stars, uh, the biggest stars yeah. of, of our sport. So if if Sporting would bring Alex Morgan to the team, yeah, do you feel do you feel that for example more companies would be attracted to mm. sponsor you girls, one hundred work with you? Yeah, 100 But now you can see in Premier League that they sign a lot of like. Uh, Uh, U.S. national team players, so they bring immediately attraction. So it's like that's really good because, uh, yeah, you have some really big names in women's football. So, of course, like imagine you sign Marta. Oh, my God. <laughs> of course, everyone will be like, oh, my God, Marta is playing there. And of course, we want to invest more. We want her to be yeah, 
that's happening now in Orlando where she's playing. She's like star in a, like everyone knows Marta. It's impossible to don't know Marta. So that's of course it's really cool. And now we we uh, scratch a little bit about speaking of sponsors and and companies yeah. investing in women's football. Uh, for example, in sporting, do you have the same sponsors as the men's team, or you have like specific companies investing just in women's team? Uh, like what I know, uh, I, we have different uh, because like I can see on our sponsor, on our jersey. But uh, yes, uh, really, I don't know who is our, like, uh, how is going everything. But yes, we have different sponsors. Espaso Casa is our sponsor. So yeah, it's different than men's, but like we are under the same club. So I don't know about that financial things, how it's going. But yeah, we have different sponsors than men's. Were you ever contacted like from your club to go and do some shooting, representing sponsors like in the in the men's team or, or, or they're doing it outside of, of, Uh, you guys participating directly in their events, their showcases and everything. Yeah, we have like shooting for them. Of course, like some, like a couple of uh, my teammates went there, of course, because they are sponsor and we are grateful to have sponsor. So, uh, yes, you have shooting. Of course, you have like, uh, like for newspapers and everything that is your, like, if I can say job, you need to go. So it's really nice because you're promoting yourself and you promote your club, which you represent, what is really cool. But yes, we have like of course sponsor and we are really happy to have them to invest in uh, like our team and do you or your teammates do you have like personal uh, sponsorship deals like is there any any company investing in you personally for example is nevena damjanovic does she have uh, a company behind her supporting you and and providing you better conditions to do your job and be who you are um uh, me personally i don't have sponsors Uh, but yes, in my team, we have, I like, I have uh, teammates, they are like sponsored by New Balance, Adidas and everything. So it's like, yeah, it's like you have a lot of, uh, I know in my team, a lot of girls which are sponsored by other like companies. So that's really cool. And it should be like that. I think it's like, yeah, we are football players and uh, we need to have our sponsors. So it's really cool. But I need to be direct now because yes. if. I don't if I if if I'm if I'm right you're the captain of one of the best Portuguese teams and you don't have sponsor behind you as a player yeah. so I must ask because I consider this as a kind of a problem yeah. I must ask why Nevena Damjanovic doesn't have a sponsor like a personal <laughs> sponsor behind the behind her uh, to be honest because Nevena Damjanovic is uh, I'm not Hard to say. I'm not crazy about if I have sponsor or no. Maybe I should be more involved. I want to have sponsors. I just, you know, I wake up, I do my job and I just enjoy playing football. So I'm not so much, um, how to say, I'm not so crazy about I need sponsor, I want this. Probably if I am more motivated to have sponsor that I could get it. But I just want to be like low key. I want to play football. I enjoy every day and I'm fine. I'm really fine. I'm enjoying. So it's like for me, it's not important. And I, I love when people just want to be more in media, more sponsorship and everything. That's really good. But I'm just a little bit different about it, to be honest. It's about me. <laughs> it's okay. I respect that, of yeah. course. But when you speak about women's football, do you think that girls and, and ladies playing professionally are more like you, just going outside playing Uh, playing because they love to play football, uh, soccer, or whatever we call it, or yeah. is there uh, is there actually uh, more of, of of them who would like to be supported by some strong companies behind them, but they don't have opportunity? Like, what do you think is the overall situation? But I think in women's football that every girl start. I know, like for me, we start because we love, and that just continue. Everything what you get after is amazing. You deserve that. Like every girl deserves to have sponsors and better contracts and everything. But we start because we love this sport. And you continue to play because you love this sport. I like my desire about this sport is same, like when I start and now. Like and I start like when I have 14 and now 28. Every day I step on that pitch and I'm like, oh my god, I'm just that little girl from outside of Kragujevac who start uh, to play football and uh, that is what that I think that's really nice because I really like start this sport 
and I start to play football with pure heart. And that is just because I love this sport. I love competitive. Uh, I like to compete every day. I like to be better. I like to win games. And I like that emotion of end of the game when you win, you know, when you're happy. And yeah, I'm just, yeah, I just enjoy playing football. <laughs> That's that's really nice. But as I as I know directly from you, yeah. your passion is also about motivating more girls in Serbia to play football, to start playing football, to be next you yeah. or or next next uh, players that we have internationally uh, playing uh, on a, on the amazing level. So, do you think that if you be if you'd be more into that, like promotion or getting sponsored, that like more girls would see what you're actually doing? Because, for example, uh, the things that we c can see what you're doing here are through your social media, yeah. mainly. Yeah. Or the social media of your club. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, I'm like, uh, to be honest, I like to talk a lot with uh, young players because, uh, I don't know, I have experience and I think that I can uh, give them some advice about like uh, football and career. So when I go in national team, uh, I love to see a lot of young players because uh, I told you like when we talked a couple of days ago that we have so much talent players and I want them to play in the best teams because they deserve, but they just need to work hard. Um, yeah, if I am more invested, probably I could uh, reach uh, more young girls, but uh, yeah, I will think about that. Now you give me like, really, maybe I, I need to step out of my comfort zone about that. So yeah, I will think about that 100%. But yes, contact me when you decide. Yeah, it. I will help really, you. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will think about that. Really, it's really nice that if I can uh, reach to young girls and uh, really, if I can, yeah, one percent influence in them and to just be better players, I'm really happy. To be honest, <laughs> uh, your club is uh, playing Champions League every year, right? You no. or it was a. It was a, a week. You don't? Uh, no, because like uh, in Portugal, only first team can uh, go in Champions League. Uh, like um, like in Denmark, two teams play Champions League every year. Here is oh, okay. different. So that's the difference. Yeah. So let's say, for example, yeah. next year you will probably, we hope, for yeah. the, for the by the end of the season that you will uh, play Champions League. And uh, we you mentioned how um, well covered are the games that you play in your league yeah. in Portugal. But but do you feel that uh, Sporting is doing good promotion internationally? Like, do you think that there is enough talk about you girls outside of Portugal? Uh, like, first year when I come, we play like a Champions League tournament in Croatia. We have our like TV crew with us who are like going like with us and uh, they just like make video about everything so yeah they're like uh, really uh, about media like uh, they're always covering us so it's like in portugal i know that we are like uh, really like we are cover covered very very well so i in europe i really don't know but what i see here it's really good well actually there is something i can tell you about it and you yeah. can pass the info yes. to, to your to your uh, to your team there uh, when you enter the website of sporting yes. you girls are under the same website as the men yeah. and when you are using the scrolling the website on in portuguese language you get to see everything about women's team but when you switch to english nothing <laughs> there is a section but there is nothing under it well for me, for me personally, who who is working in in, in women's football, this is like a huge yeah. step back. And you, and from the other side, you see how how they're stepping in in Portugal. So I'm like wondering, do we need to step up internationally? Maybe. Now? Yeah, I didn't know that, but uh, yeah, I mean, generally in Portugal, they like Portuguese and their language. So yeah, that's I yeah, didn't know course. that. So really interesting. Yeah, I will pass that info one hundred percent. Thank yes, you. we should. We Thank we you. have to. with this with this soccer podcast. We have to change things in, 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 to be better for the women's football. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Even even in even in sporting. Why not? <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, speaking about uh, the Portugal and, and the women's football there and, and the fans and everything, uh, I know that uh, Carla Couto played for both for uh, Sporting and Benfica. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I remember that if something happened like that in men's football, like the, if the man is playing for Sporting and then for Benfica, it would be a scandal. Is that a feeling now that you that you have even for the ladies? I mean, if you would, for example, switch and go to play for Benfica, do you feel that the, the, that would be the huge scandal like in the men's football? But yeah, I don't think so. It's huge uh, because like now we have one girl, she plays sporting, like she played central back next to me and she now playing for Benfica. Of course, people were like, whoa, how you can go from sporting to Benfica? But it wasn't so like... Uh, media attention about that but in men's football yeah that will be like really really if I can say problem because how you can switch to things but that is like how to say that's uh, yeah that happening in uh, men's football like uh, it's not so often but yeah it happens you have Zlatan Ibrahimovic he playing in Inter and Milano now and you know like Ronaldo in Real Madrid and Barcelona it's happening but yeah it's in men's football I think it's more like media attention and it's more like whoa than in women's football, so, yeah. Do you miss that? Do you miss that kind of attention in women's football? Or you feel that with this type of the attention, you get to uh, bring more at the pitch and think less of what's happening in the media? But yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, the most important is, like, what you bring on the pitch, you know? Like, and I always want to say, like, I'm always focused about, like, uh, how I perform on the pitch. So yes, when you have like uh, big games, uh, always is like some media pressure, like, oh, you know, it's like Benfica Sporting or like we play against Braga. Like, it, of course you have that pressure, but in the end, when you step on that pitch, I forgot about everything. I just focus about my job. I was like, okay, now how I need to play. So yeah, I can imagine how it's in men's football, how much they have pressure, but in the end of the day, when they step on the pitch, they forgot about everything. They just play 90 minutes, how they know, so, yeah. And when you post on social media, do you think about that, that, for example, media can use uh, your posts or maybe photos? Do you take care of how you post on social media to be sure that everything is covered well after after that? Uh, yeah, of course, you need to be careful. And uh, that is a little bit... Uh, I'd say problem because a lot of girls uh, they don't think about what they post on social media so that can be a problem uh, of course you need to be uh, like yeah when you're athlete you need to represent uh, how to say you need to give example to young players to young people like and of course you need to be careful because you can have one mistake and to be really big mistake for your unfortunate career you know so yeah you need to be careful and uh, you need to be like aware about everything so when you post something on instagram or or any social media you need to be aware what uh, what you want to like sh what message you want to show so yeah it's really important that uh, every athlete uh, be aware about what post and what message is sending out and and this, at this point, do you use your social media profiles more to represent like yourself or actually what you are doing? Like, what's the? Do yeah. you have any strategy in terms of using your own social media? Yeah, it's like uh, to be honest. First, I just use like to, like personally about Nevin Atmianovic. So I'm like, okay, I will post like what I want to post. It's not problem. Of course, to, don't take me wrong. I I will not not nothing post something what is not if I can say normal. Because, like, uh, I represent first my family, you know, I represent my parents. I cannot post uh, anything on Instagram, oh my God. But now, uh, how I start to be, like, uh, older, yeah, I realize that, uh, is it, like, social media is more about now uh, I represent, like, national team player, like, sporting player. So I am more and more careful about that. So actually, you're doing the thing that I thought that you have to do <laughs> to increase <laughs> to increase yeah. attention and, and 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 actually the possibility for young girls to see what you're yeah. doing. Yeah, <laughs> I now I realize I'm like whoa. <laughs> yeah, but now I'm uh, yeah more ca careful because like yeah how you can reach more people out. So it's like yeah you need to represent. I say like national team. Uh, you need to represent your club. So you need to be careful 100. percent 
do you uh, need more platforms or more media where you can represent what you are doing or what you, your results, like, let's say globally in order to, for example, bring more to women's football or to increase the level of women's football that is happening globally? But it, like I say, generally, women's football is like in an amazing way. Like we are growing day by day, really. Like when I start <laughs> and now, oh my God, you cannot compare. You know, when I start, I just start like, okay, I want to play football because of, I don't know, I love sport. And always when I imagine that, I don't know, I will play in some stadium with 10,000 people, I will be like deep, deep down. That is not possible, Nena. You know, you're in Serbia, in small town, you just play with your friends. That is impossible. But now when I have a couple of games, like, I don't know, I play against Athletic Bilbao in stadium, men's stadium with 10,000 people watch me, I was like, whoa. That little girl like reached their uh, her dreams, so it's amazing. Uh, yes, of course you always have, but you always can increase. Like if you put more in media, like uh, and support women's football, that is like really good thing because uh, more media attention, it's really nice. So yeah, we start uh, like I think in Serbia now to put more attention in women's football because I think that we deserve. So I hope so that like I don't know for couple of years it will be better 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 i think it's only one way and we are going forward so that's that's good to hear and about this entire situation and everything that we as a world suffered last year do you feel that uh, women's football suffered as well that uh, there is a step back maybe in this progress due to the pandemic and everything happening what do you think about this situation currently and of course about this year and going moving forward playing games going out like traveling again in in some way do you think that that last year like put us back or that we just paused the progress a little bit and now we're continuing where we left yeah it's uh what happening from last year it's uh unfortunately we're really sad you know i always say like you have every like you have much bigger things than football or sport or anything like the most important is everyone is safe and everyone is healthy so it's so sad that we are living in this time but yeah we need to adjust so for football of course uh, everyone i think not only football everyone will suffer all economy will suffer so uh, but in the end of the day i think football show how strong it is like you know during the pandemic we continue to play during the pandemic my league we start new league so when every everything was shut down now uh, two months in portugal we still continue to play so yes this is just i think little bit pause but we continue because football show how it's strong and i i always say the most important that in this pandemic that we realize that every day is amazing and we are blessed to have this type of life so i hope so soon it will be like over then people will not suffer anymore I would I would like to conclude this conversation with something you told me that now uh, after the last year you're actually uh, thinking of your games in a different way. Yeah. Can you tell us uh, about that? How do you feel now when you go outside on the pitch yeah. uh, instead of instead of before last year? Yeah, it's like uh, you know I play football like long time and you have a lot of games so some games you just go out and okay I need to win. Um, and I don't know, I, I, I realized in, uh, during Corona time and uh, during our quarantine that uh, I can enjoy much more. So, you know, I can feel the moment, I can feel the game. It's not important if it's derby or if you play against some team who is not on your level. But yeah, you need to enjoy every moment. Nothing is granted. You never know what can happen. If someone told me that we will leave during pandemic, I will be like, no way. It's 2020 come on what pandemic and then you realize how it's beautiful to be athlete how it's beautiful to be with your friends to hug your friends on the pitch to celebrate goals you know first uh, when we start to tra uh, train we, sh we were separate in three groups because of uh, rules uh, about corona and everything and i was like no i want all team together i want everyone to feel same energy so yes i i told you like 
uh, I really enjoy every moment. I enjoy trainings. I enjoy like to play football because nothing is granted. So let's enjoy. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very much. This was really inspiring. And we can say that with your example and example of what's happening in Portugal, if we copy that model, maybe overall women's football can even progress more. Yeah. So we'll keep in touch so that you can bring us more <laughs> advices and what's happening in Portugal so that we can use it in a, in a worldwide women's yeah. football. Thank you very much for having me. It's a really pleasure to talk with you and I hope so that some little girl will listen to this, so I can motivate her to be a better athlete and a better football player. Well, I'll help you to reach those girls. Yeah, I will go from my comfort zone. <laughs> we will stay in touch. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you.